This video is a continuation of our Jack's Messianic Fellowship Foundations class. So for the past several weeks, we've been going chapter by chapter through the book Restoration by Thomas Lancaster. It's a publication by First Fruits of Zion. And this week, I'm going to cover chapter seven in this video. We actually, we covered this this past Shabbat. We covered chapters seven and eight. And I'm going to go back for the purposes of our online audience and uh, record notes in this video for chapter seven. So chapter seven, the title of it is called The Inner Torah. And really this um, chapter centers around a passage in the book of James or the book of Jacob. So this is from James chapter one, uh, verses 23 through 25. It says, if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer of it, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. He looks at himself and goes on his way. And at once he forgets what he looked like, what kind of man he was. But whoever looks into the perfect law, the perfect Torah of liberty and continues in it, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer who acts, this man will be blessed in his doing. So the chapter really centers around this passage of the Torah's function as a mirror, as a mirror for the inner man. So we're going to go through my notes briefly. Uh, point number one, the Torah. So again, just as a refresher for anyone who's catching this for the first time, when the, the author of this book uses the word Torah, he's referring to Torah in its most literal sense, its most concrete sense, referring to the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So the author shares in this chapter that the Torah is likened to a mirror for the inner man, a mirror for the soul. The Torah reflects the image, not of the person looking into it. And it kind of discussed this in the chapter of how you can imagine if you looked into the Torah, and every time you looked into it, you saw an image of really of what's going on inside of you, um, that the image might not be too pretty. Um, but um, the chapter shares the idea that the Torah acting as a mirror, the reflection that it's really showing to someone who's looking into it is the reflection of the Messiah, the Messiah Yeshua. The Torah reflects the image of the Messiah and the righteousness of God. By looking into the Torah like a mirror, we can see our inner identity in the Messiah. We should look into this mirror intently and then go out and practice what we saw in the mirror. The Torah teaches us what we are supposed to look like. Okay? And there are times when maybe the Holy Spirit uses the scriptures to convict a person, to show a person what's really going on on the inside, that maybe there is a, an image that's not too pretty. But the point being, uh, the point of the chapter is that the Torah reflects to the person looking into it, the image of the Messiah and really shows us the standard um, that God expects for his children, for his people to live by whether the people of Israel, the Jewish people, or for Gentiles who have been brought in, grafted into the kingdom of Israel through the Messiah Yeshua, through faith in him. Uh, so the Torah functions as a mirror, as a reflection of the, the righteous standard of the Messiah. Uh, for example, if we study the Torah's commandments with respect to helping those less fortunate, okay, the Torah has many commands uh, regarding taking care of the poor, the vulnerable. If we look into the mirror and we see these things, and then we return to our lives without putting into practice what we read, we're like that man who looks in the mirror and then he goes away and he forgets what he looked like. Yeah, you know, he, he, might, he might have looked into the mirror and saw, you know, I need to brush my teeth. <laughs> I need to, uh, you know, I need to fix my hair. And then he just walks away and doesn't do anything about it. When someone becomes a believer in the Messiah Yeshua, they become a completely new person. Uh, they have a new legal identity as being a part of God's family. Okay, there's a there's a legal 
transformation uh, in the eyes of God. This person becomes a child of God. They are forgiven of sins and they're declared righteous. God's Holy Spirit fills that person as if the Messiah himself now dwells in the person. And this chapter makes a, uh, a, makes a point that's a humorous point, but it is something worth, think, uh, worth thinking about that when we say the Messiah lives inside of us and we really have a Torah observant Jewish man that's dwelling inside every believer, and that should, you know, that should uh, give us some pause, you know, to think about that. And how does that reflect, you know, how do I understand Yeshua? If the Messiah is living inside of me, how did he live? You know, how, what is his, uh, you know, how does he live out the Torah? Uh, so, you know, he's our rabbi. We're learning from him. To the extent that we surrender ourselves to our new identity in the Messiah, we succeed in living our lives for him, letting ourselves be molded into his reflection, the reflection of Yeshua. We become his hands and feet on the earth. When we continue in sinful behavior, we're living in contradiction to our new nature in the Messiah. We're not living in concert with the reflection of the Messiah that's being shown to us from the Torah. And this is a quote from, the, from chapter 7, from page 80. It says, When we keep the Torah as it applies to us as Jews or Gentiles, we allow the Messiah to live through us. He is righteousness, and the Torah is the standard of righteousness. He is the law fulfilled, and he desires to fulfill it through us. We talked about that briefly in our men's discussion about this chapter this past week, that the Messiah is the law fulfilled, and he also desires to fulfill it through us. That sometimes coming up from a, from a Christian background, uh, when I you know hear the passage in Matthew 5 where the Messiah says, do not think that I have come to abolish the Torah or the prophets, I've not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Occasionally, that word there, fulfill, is interpreted um, almost to mean abolish, in the sense of, well, you know, the Messiah came, and maybe he died and rose again, and by him doing that, um, the righteous requirements of the law are fulfilled, uh, which means I'm no longer responsible for them. Now, God forbid that you know, we should say that anyone is responsible to a particular command of the Torah in order to inherit eternal life. Uh, so that's not what this book teaches and not what we teach. But the Apostle Paul teaches that believers are saved for the purpose of good works, good deeds. And the Torah is this mirror that reflects the standard, uh, standard of the Messiah, Yeshua, and it's really what defines good deeds. Uh, for God's community, good deeds in God's kingdom, in his economy. So when the Messiah says that he came to fulfill the law, it's not necessarily that the Messiah is removing the responsibility off your shoulders to live according to God's instructions and God's law. It's that the Messiah has come to fulfill the law in order to establish it in the sense of rightly interpreting it, um, you know, and this this idea of this meaning for fulfill is evident in the surrounding context from Matthew 5. You know, he clearly says that the Torah, he says, until heaven and earth pass away, not even the smallest letter, the yod, not even a stroke of the pen will pass away from the Torah until all things are fulfilled or all things are brought to pass. And then he goes on to clarify, he says, whoever does the commandments of the Torah and teaches them, he will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So he is the law fulfilled, established. He is the law properly interpreted, properly viewed, and he desires to continue to fulfill it through his disciples. You are his hands and feet. Last point for this video. When the Gospel of John speaks of Yeshua as the Word made flesh, this is from John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It is speaking of the Torah. 
that in the beginning was the Torah. Yeshua is the living Torah. Now, this is not necessarily to say that, you know, before heaven and earth were created, there was God with a Torah scroll, a literal Torah scroll. But know that the essence of the Torah, the, the, the words of the Torah, the, you know, the essence and the intent that forms the Torah, this living Torah was part and parcel with God and from God and proceeded from him and it is a piece of him and it was with him in the beginning and through this word, through the Torah, all things were created, heaven and earth. And that living Torah that was with God in the very beginning and is him, you know, it is part and parcel with his essence. This living Torah is what came down to earth from heaven and took on the likeness of a man and dwelt among us, like John chapter 1 says. Yeshua is the living Torah revealed to us. Essentially, the Torah was with God in the beginning and was the means through which all things were created. And that word became flesh and dwelt among us. When we become disciples, the living Torah, i.e. Yeshua, takes up residence inside of us, and it stands to reason then that he would lead us to the written Torah. There is no contradiction between the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Messiah living in the disciple, and the written Torah. Uh, there's no contradiction between these two. So that's the notes that I had for chapter 7. Uh, just as a word of encouragement to wrap up this video, I encourage you to look into the Torah daily and to look into this mirror, to gaze into it, to learn the standard of really the Messiah, to learn how he is the righteous standard of the Torah, how he fulfills it in his walk, in his daily life as we see in the Gospels. And what you learn when you gaze into this mirror, put it into practice in your daily life and how you treat people and how you love God and how you show your love for him. Let the Torah be your guide. Let it be your mirror. So thank you for watching and we'll continue uh, with chapter eight.